All right, and good morning. My name is Olivia Olivares. I'm the Instruction and Outreach Librarian at the University of California at Merced. With me are Lisa Silvera of the Office of Financial Aid and Kelly Abresi, also of the library. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of the Abresi Cranish Scholarship, uh, the requirements for a successful application for the scholarship, and we'll wrap up with a few uh, notes and uh, some information about the obligations that the award uh, carries. Uh, Kelly? Yeah, so my name is Kelly Abracy, and I am actually a staff member in the library. Um, but prior to joining the library back in 2017, um, this award was actually created by my grandmother. And the purpose of this award is actually to honor my late grandfather, um, so Larry Cronick, and um, also um, what would have been his firstborn uh, grandson, which is my son, Carter Abrasi. So they are the namesakes of this award. Um, the reason that it was created um, was because my grandfather did not go to college. Um, he barely finished high school, middle school even. Um, but he went on to become extremely successful as a president for a major corporation, and he did that all on his own. And the way he did that was through resourcefulness and using what he had around him. Um, and he instilled that in all of his grandchildren. And that is why we created this award, because we want to honor students' ability to be resourceful, um, find their way. Um, and this was kind of his dream was that, you know, everybody receive a college education. That was, even though he did not have that opportunity, that was so important to him that all of his grandchildren succeed um, and have that ability. And so we're doing this to hopefully give students a little boost um, and recognize all of the good work that they're doing. Um, and it's important because it also sheds light on library resources and um, just using what you have around you um, to accomplish your goals. So that's a little bit about the award. Um, and uh, yeah, I think Olivia is gonna talk a little bit about the actual application process. Indeed. So I wanna emphasize from the get-go that this is a library research award. So uh, the successful applicant for this award will have noted in the reflective essay that's required, uh, an understanding of the research process and how the university library fits in that research process. Uh, so we would want to see uh, preferably uh, how you deployed library research in, the, uh, in your work. So uh, what databases did you use? Uh, what print materials, if any, you, you used? Uh, search strategies, uh, search terms, uh, perhaps uh, maybe some information. Did you consult with a librarian uh, in, the, uh, in your research process? And how was uh, the library research component of your, uh, of your work uh, a successful contributor to your success? And uh, we would also want, want to point out, uh, needless to say, that the successful application will be uh, well-written, uh, spell-checked, uh, grammar is correct, your P's and Q's are in order, your T's are crossed, your I's are dotted. You'll want to be careful to uh, proofread uh, anything you turn in prior to turning it in. And uh, I will now turn this over to Lisa. Thank you. Um, my name is Lisa Silvera, and I am the scholarship coordinator um, with the Office of Financial Aid and Scholarships. And I have been um, in the, the financial aid office for 14 years. Um, so I first started as an advisor, and then now I'm doing the scholarship coordination. So I am going to talk um, about the actual application, um, go through it step by step, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to, to uh, answer any questions that may come up. Okay, let me share my screen here. Okay, um, so there are really two ways that you can go and access the application itself. Um, the first one is by using the direct URL that is in all of the 
um, the announcements and the advertising for the scholarship. So you can um, copy the uh, URL into the, um, the, the box here, and it'll take you right to this main screen. Um, and you'll be able to read through the, the um, award information, and then you could hit apply, and that will take you to the login screen. Um, the next section is if you're just on the main homepage, you can go under opportunities. And this, this award is considered a spring cycle award because it's going to be awarded in the spring term. So if you click on spring cycle um, applications, then you will also see it here. And so then you can um, just hit apply. So I'm going to do that now. And it'll go step by step on the actual application itself. So the top section is just some general um, disclosure information, how the scholarship uh, could affect your other financial aid. Uh, I will say that in most cases, we our first process, if you are awarded a scholarship, is to reduce any um, student loans or work study offers that you have. Um, as a last resort, we will um, we may have to reduce any other scholarship or grant aid, but if that's the case, then I will reach out to you and see if there's other options before I make any um, changes to any other grant or scholarship aid. Um, and the reason is, is all financial aid, uh, grants, scholarships, loans, work study, it all has to be uh, included in your total cost. And so we can't award over a certain dollar amount. And so uh, federal regulations require us to keep track of all of that. So that's why we have to incorporate it in your financial aid awards. Um, so this is just the, the main um, disclosure stuff at the top. And then at any time during the application, you can save and keep it. Um, and then you can go in and update it clear up until the date, um, I believe it's midnight on the date that it's due or 11.59 on the date that it's due. And then we will, um, we will keep the last submitted application as the most current record. So um, if you just keep, if you can also, once you submit it, you could also go back in and update it at that time too. It'll just be your last submission as of that date will be your most current record. Okay. Um, so here you'll have the deadline over on the left-hand side. Um, and then again, there's more information on, on the uh, scholarship itself. So the supplemental questions that will be asked is um, your project information. So your, your course instructor name, and this will, will be for a project that you've done within the last um, year. Um, and as long as you have completed one semester here, at UC Merced, then you are eligible to apply for that, that this scholarship. So we would um, need to have the course instruction name and the course title and number. And all of these are, you could just um, click on the, the box and it'll allow you to put whatever information in there. Um, again, here's the semester or the year you completed it. And then this is about, this section here is about the author information. So it asks if it's a group, a group project or a team project. So the drop down menu will allow you to um, click individual or team. Now, uh, if it is a team project, your, your team names, your team member names and student IDs may be requested at a later date, um, but just so you are aware of that. So the first submission that we're looking for is the, um, the abstract submission. And it kind of gives you a little bit of a description down here of what, um, what your abstract writing should be about. Um, so an, ab an ab abstract summarizes your paper or project in a single paragraph of no more than 250 words. Um, and it will cut you off at that, at that um, word count. It should provide enough key information about your methods, um, results, and findings to allow the reader to decide whether they want to view the rest of your paper or project. And um, so you, could, you can see examples of that here by using this URL. So if you um, do want to, 
if you add a new file, you just click this button and then you can go in and choose the file on your computer and then upload it. Okay. Um, the next section is the reflective essay section. Um, and this is, this is really where you're going to, um, to summarize your research process. And so I think um, in addition to your, your um, paper or your project, this is a key, um, a key thing for you to, to pay attention to because I know in the, in the past recipients and the past selection committees, they've really um, taken a, um, a hard look at the reflective essay section. Um, so this basically, this information here, it tells you um, what it is that they're looking for, some questions that you um, should address when um, completing the application. So what tools you use, your resources of the library, um, basically just, just really detailing what it is and the resources that you use for this specific project um, in, in your research process. Um, and then again, you don't have to, um, to answer all of these questions, but these are just a few examples of things that you should incorporate in your reflective essay. That way the review committee can get a good understanding of your, your process. Okay, um, then again, you do the same exact thing. You could add a new file. Um, you could view it once you have added it and there are, we accept files in these three formats. Okay. Um, the bibliography. It says, please upload your bibliography or reference list and state the citation style you used. Um, so we, you can, you can put your citation style here, and then you could also upload your file um, of your your citations. So this is a two part section here. And then the paper or project submissions. So obviously um, this is where you're going to want to upload your, your file here um, of your actual paper or project. And it's pretty, all, pretty similar um, standard throughout the whole application is the method. Um, so you, you can click here to add a new file and find it on your desktop. Um, if you have a URL that you are using um, for your, your paper or project, you can put the URL here in this section. Okay. Um, the agreement for um, archiving the work in eScholarship. So this is if you um, agree for us to publish your, your paper um, or your project. So we would need that submission. And then if, so you would just put yes or no here. You only have to do this one time. And then optional, if you would like to apply, um, apply the following Creative Commons licenses. I'm not too sure about this one. Somebody had to explain this to me, um, but uh, maybe Olivia or Kelly can, can uh, chime in on this one. Um, but you would select your option here. Again, it's optional. Um, this, this doesn't have to be um, indicated. Creative and then our last Commons. section. Oh, if I may, yes. sir, Lisa, Creative Commons is a form of a copyright permission. Oh, okay. So um, I would strongly advise you if you are willing uh, to share your work uh, without uh, uh, any uh, how should I put this? It, it basically indicates that the work is not for profit. So somebody could use your work in subsequent work as long as they were not uh, uh, selling that work and as long as you did not expect remuneration. And there are several different types of licenses in Creative Commons. So I would strongly urge you to visit the website here to see uh, what kinds of Creative Commons licenses exist and uh, choose accordingly. You may of course choose none. This is entirely optional. You don't have to do this. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. 
Um, the next section is we want to know how you heard about um, this award. So if it's a staff member, if it was um, just through our, our undergraduate scholarship um, page, happenings, any type of social media campaign, we want to know um, how you came to know about this scholarship. So if you would, um, if you would uh, answer this section for us, we would appreciate that for future reference. And then uh, the last section is here, if you are selected for an award, would you be willing to provide general information to the donor and possibly attend a meeting or award luncheon? And so you would hit yes or no for here. Um, and then you would submit, save and keep, or um, you can finish and submit. And like I said, at any time up until that due date, you can always go in and update your application um, if you want to work on it throughout throughout the month or, or whatnot, you could always go in and update that um, after you have submitted it. So once you hit finish and submit, um, I will not do that because it I didn't do any of it. Um, I didn't fill in any of the bubbles, but um, at the very top, once you hit finish and submit, you will be able to go over here to my applications. I'm going to see if it has that. And then you could see where there's um, where you have one that's in process or where you have one that's completed. And so here's where you would go in and click update if you ever want to go in and update your your project. Okay. And then we will um, the the process for awarding is we will um, um, let me see. We the award closes on January 28th, I believe, and then we will start the selection process and go through the review, review committee. Um, this scholarship is is uh, so, uh, selected by a uh, review committee that's made up of staff and faculty and um, a whole panel of people, and so we will um, start that process usually in February. And hopefully we will have a recipient selected in uh, late February, early March, and then we will add that to your financial aid award and notify you accordingly. I believe that's all for me. Olivia? I'm sorry, you're on mute, Olivia. Oh, goodness, I'm sorry. Here I am chatting away. My apologies. Thank you, Lisa. Um, that Remember the tail end of the application that said uh, whether or not you would appear at an award ceremony? You want to click yes, and this is non-negotiable. It's a rather important award for the library, so there will be an award ceremony at the library uh, and a small reception with refreshments and uh, people. Uh, several dignitaries from the university will uh, be in attendance, so we would like you to make yourself available for that reception. And as I said before, it's non-negotiable. Uh, you will have your photograph taken with the university li librarian and possibly the provost uh, and other dig uh, dignitaries, so you'll want to be combed and groomed and washed and presentable uh, so you can save the, the photographs for your family. So only one person gets the award. So if you're working as part of a team, we do need to know who the other people are on the team and other person, persons on the team may also apply, but only one of you will get the award. So uh, the quality of your writing and your presentation are really going to be paramount in determining who gets that award. Uh, you must have completed one semester at UC Merced for eligibility. And uh, the application should reflect the use of the University of California at Merced's library, not somebody else's library. So if you're transferring here from UC Santa Cruz or UC Davis, a project that entailed the use of those libraries would render this award, uh, render you ineligible for this award. Um, that's really about it, unless uh, Lisa or uh, Kelly have anything else to say? except to say good luck. Uh, we hope to get many, many applicants and thank you very much.